Election Day, if you can believe it, is still not over. And not long ago, there was yet another big Democratic win. NBC projects Democrat Katie Hobbs will be the next governor of Arizona. She beat Republican Carrie Lake, a Trump-endorsed vocal 2020 election denier, a big one. But not long ago, despite there being no evidence of fraud, a defiant-sounding Lake tweeted, quote, Arizonians know BS when they see it. At this hour, control of the entire House is still up for grabs. Votes in several races are still being counted, and the margin will be narrow for whichever party has control. Over the weekend, Nevada's Catherine Cortez Masto's victory helped seal Democrats' control of the Senate. And earlier tonight, Majority Leader Chuck Schumer described what that means for the president and the entire Democratic Party. It will mean appointees and judges will get appointed much more quickly. You can get different bills out of committee much more quickly. It's a lot easier to get things done. Meanwhile, the former president is promising to announce his 2024 plans tomorrow at his club in Florida. Several Republicans, Republicans, I'm going to say it again and underlining it, are now publicly blaming Trump himself for the party's less than stellar performance in the midterms, i.e. no red wave. Tonight, Politico reports the influential conservative Club for Growth, that group has polling out that gives Florida Governor Ron DeSantis a double-digit lead in both New Hampshire and Iowa. Funny, they're putting that out a night before Trump speaks. And the Texas Tribune says that a poll from the state's Republican Party also shows GOP voters referred DeSantis to Trump by more than 10 points. And while he plans his future, Trump is now facing even more potential legal trouble. He has now failed to comply with a subpoena from the January 6th committee to appear before a deposition today. Late this afternoon, the panel accused him of hiding from their investigation. The committee says it is now evaluating its next steps. Meanwhile, his former vice president now speaking out about the January 6th riot and about messages Trump himself sent about Pence and the mob that attacked the Capitol. But the president's words were reckless, and his actions were reckless. The president's words that day at the rally endangered me and my family and everyone at the Capitol building. 2.24 p.m., the president tweets Mike Pence didn't have the courage to do what should have been done. It angered me. But I turned to my daughter, who was standing nearby, and I said, it doesn't take courage to break the law. It takes courage to uphold the law. While we continue to track headlines from the midterm results, there's also a tragic story we're following out of Virginia. The deadly shooting that took the lives of three members of the University of Virginia football team. NBC's Ryan Nobles has more on that. Tonight, a campus and community in shock. Five patients, repeat, five patients with gunshot wounds. After a shooting on campus left three University of Virginia football players dead and two other students injured, one critically. Authorities say Christopher Darnell Jones, a student and former member of the university's football team, opened fire on a bus filled with students who had just returned to campus after a class trip. He then fled the scene. The campus locked down as officials warn students the suspect was still armed and a threat. The suspect now charged with three counts of second degree murder was arrested without incident about 75 miles away from campus. The victims, all students, including Devin Chandler, a recent UVA transfer student from Wisconsin. Laval Davis Jr., remembered as a kind and happy person. And Deshaun Perry, a linebacker, last on the field for the Cavaliers just days ago. We saw Deshaun Perry play just on Saturday and now he's gone.